A15. Oh, we have way there. Wow! <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mark and today we are on day 15 of drawing our animal from our jar thing. Here is our animal of the day. It's the jaguar. 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 Another animal with spots. Magnificent. Let's look for references. But before we do, kindly subscribe to the video. To the video. Kindly subscribe to the channel and like the video. It means a lot in the whole algorithm of things. And let's get started. Hey. So here we are. Here we are. And I found a reference of a jaguar on Unsplash. This is my reference. And I don't quite know exactly how to approach this. But it's just, um, uh, what's it called? It's a new thing. And as with all new things, you just have to do it so that it gets done. So with my gesture brush, I'll try and get the gesture of this thing first. And then we can refine our big cat. Now what's funny is in the comments yesterday, uh, we were talking about how apes and big cats are like really challenging to draw. And I knew for sure there's at least one more ape in my jar and one big cat. And look at us. Here we are. Here we is. We drawing big cats today. I'm excited. It's day 15. I don't... It's been been quite the journey journey and what i'm doing right now is trying to look at the shapes where i see there's some separations between the, the limbs and the body looking at the angles this is a face and the neck thing should be around here and the shoulder should be here and with the head something like this and then the ears trying to be loose at this stage before the refinement set in. The elbow is flush with the body. So we'll need to change that because we don't want uh, tangents in our drawing. Back foot underneath that side we can decrease this. And then we have at the foot, the back leg goes here. Not too far, that's here. <clears throat> and it's hidden behind some, this bush, but I can sort of make out a bit of it in the back goes something i exaggerated it too much there Something like so my cat's too long leave it here and the tail coming through coming through to here might be too long so i'll just move here shorten this up to there and this to here then just erase this I think this is too long again just move this somewhere here so we'll use this as our rough Maybe liquefy it a bit, liquefy a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of this, a bit of that. This head a bit bigger. Let's see how it looks from this angle. So we'll use this as our rough. So to go even closer, so we get a really cool sketch. Let's start with this shadow of the mouth. Now put the reference on the screen so that you can follow along. It's also in the description. You can look at it and download it as required. Now this is technically what will become our rough sketch. Now from this is when we'll refine on top. Look at that nose. Put some refinements on top of this. Some more accurate proportions as well. So what I'm seeing over here is the chin. It's actually square and it tapers like this. And then this after the mouth bit of cheek it's also square goes straight to just above the nose over here and we have this a uh, bit of uh, i don't know let's call it anatomy just before the eye which is sort of straight straight like that and then this shape now just looking at the shapes currently and then the eye is really in here same for this other side hopefully it's accurate it's a bit skewed let me try and push it down with the liquify nah, it's okay then we have this like fold over here and there's the kind of fold here the rest of the face the ear i usually try to do similar features at the same time so once i'm done with this ear i'll go to the other one. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Have this edge of the face also squarish. Do some of that because I'm seeing some proportional stuff. Make it like so. And hopefully I shall paint this. And then we have this 
part the animal that goes into guessing this is the neck the rest of the body going from there my animal seems i feel like this part is a bit in compared to my reference or rather the my face is too wide i don't know if we can fix that with liquify or if i need to redraw let's keep it there for the time being and then we'll see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is getting serious. As far as cat heads go, I think this is my best one so far. Especially in uh, this kind of view. What view is this? Um, I don't know. Front view. In this front view, I never have been confident in front view animals because i don't know but i have drawn in profile seem to be more confident in profile view so this is a nice change of pace i might need to change this now bring it lower this should be i think the bicep this and leg what did we say we're gonna call front limbs of animals because yes they are legs are they blank 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 shoulder Oh my lord, woody lord, they painted on the wrong layer. They drew on the wrong layer. It's fine, it's fine. It's no biggie, but this drawing seems a mess right now. We'll refine where we can, where we can't, we just pray. I feel like I have to move this, to move this, so it comes like this, and then something like that. Something like so, we have the tail over here, it looks a bit short. According to this perspective, I think jaguars have shorter tails than most cats. I also know that they have, I might be wrong, but they have the strongest jaws in the cat family. So you will not survive a bite from this cat. Jungle leopard. Realistically speaking, panthers, black panthers are actually jaguars. Leopards are also technically jaguars. Or jaguars are technically leopards. The difference is just the pigmentation and the stripage in the habitat. I think for all intents and purposes, they are the same cat. That's interesting to note. Here I wanted to get rid of that tangent. A tangent is basically feature in a drawing or painting where, for example, if I'm drawing here, my ear, and then we have another feature. Let's say it had a horn. So if the horn in the picture goes like this, it makes it difficult or weird horn. It makes it difficult for the viewer to see whether this ear is in front or side by side or if the horn is in front of the ear. So this part, this thing, is what we call tangent. So if the animal actually had a horn, it would be more uh, readable if we do something like that. Just an example. So because the ear overlaps the horn, we can say that this is behind. This is in front. And that's your art lesson of the day. Back to our regular scheduled program. I feel there's some parts of this animal I might artistically uh, obscure, but I am glad how it's turned out so far. Yeah, really happy with this. Now we do the thing. We merge these. And then now we do the refined sketch. We decrease this one's opacity. And I sort of want to use a brownish, brownish color for the line work. Let me lock this so we don't paint on this. Now we do a refined sketch with the 2B. Back to the reference. This time I'm starting with the eye, slowly building up, looking at the reference, trying not to rush, although I am in a hurry. I'm late, I'm late. This is the eye thing, and then we have the cheek come over here, and then the cheek leads away from the eye like this. And we have another flank of flesh or skin just underneath that and then now we have a mouth do the same for the other side i don't know why i didn't turn on symmetry though i've never used the symmetry tools in anything we maybe we'll try tomorrow we'll try and use that tool tomorrow tomorrow and here in the eye we have something happening going to the cheek it's the same thing as this side and here the same more boxy thing like that Ooh. Okay, and then my eyes are different sizes, so let's fix that. Ooh, let's do the nose before we forget. And the lower jaw. We have this bit of uh, overlapping fur. And then we have barely visible demarcation of the hand and bicep. Move the shoulder just a bit because looking at my reference, 
rooms we were off to. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking of uh, how to actually paint this because I've been looking at the other videos that we have so far and I really like day nine and uh, day nine was a flamingo, flamango and day, when was the impala? Is it 11? Day nine and 11, that kind of a uh, sketchy, chalky look, I feel like I kind of like that sort of look. I'd like to do something with that, although I also know that the goal of this entire exercise is to familiarize myself with this program as well as get paint uh, get better at painting animals. So there's a thing I haven't tried, which is the watercolor brushes. That's kind of exciting yet very, feels very intimidating-ish to try, but we can try that today. So let's see how it goes. If you're paying like really, really close attention, you'll see that I'm not really focusing on this, on the legs too much. I feel like for those, for these uh, parts of anything even humans i need more practice hands and feet and paws and claws so for some of these it's just uh demarcating but here we have a leopard a jaguar let's call this sketch then just for fun let me duplicate that then ooh, ooh, kind of like it with this one so i'll group those and then below that Let's go to paint and let me look for all and search for watercolor. This is a watercolor, basic round fringe, basic round grain, round grunge, wet pattern. I have no idea what these things say. Watercolor spread, watercolor spread wide area, watercolor spread pattern. So let me say this spread wide area and then go to a really dark uh, green and just uh, do stuff. Let's Let's do stuff. This is for the background. I do no idea how my wife does this. We make it much bigger. Do that. Do that. Make it darker towards the bottom. Maybe here. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, the harder I press, the wider it, it spreads. The softer I press, the more pigmented it becomes and stuff like that starts happening. Okay, so let's get to the color of the animal. I feel like it's a really tanny like thing, like this. Oops, oops, oops. New layer. We need some, at least some imperfections. So just look at my reference one more time. The bottom bits. We need, we just add another layer to be safe. We need to be white or white art. So these are like, these brushes are, they're weird to me because the harder you press, the less uh, pigment, the wider the spread of the area. So th the softer I press, the whiter this becomes. Very strange, very strange. But the good thing is I can erase. That's just wonderful, wonderful. And the erasing works the same, the harder, I press, the less things happen. It's really cool. Okay, so the next thing, the next color should be a bit dark. So another layer going lower on the value scale. And probably let's use watercolor spread. Same thing. The harder I press, the less pigment. It's so wild, so strange. And there's a sponge. Ooh. Okay, okay. So I need a darker this watercolor spread pattern. I like this one. I like it. I like it. So let's do something like that. The shadowy bits of our animal. We need a pinkish color for the nose. An almost golden color for the eye. And then a really saturated this color but saturated for uh, this spread pattern, spread wide. Let's try this with these areas. It's too, it's too much. Yeah, something like this. Make it a bit wider. And then we do some more things. Some more things. What's this? Special blobs. I think we'll go back to our wide area. For this one, we might decrease the, the layer's um, opacity slightly. Then maybe we go more orange. Duplicate this. For this one, command U. Go more there, colorize. Yeah, colorize. Go more orange. It should be nice. Darker, less saturated. Something like so. And then I think when it comes to the rosette, and the spots and the details in the eyes, we might need to add a new layer 
go to my SK2, go to the color pencils, go really dark, increase this size, we start with the eye, we should paint this on top of the sketch, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, back to our lines, watercolor brushes, so I'm using the basic lines, uh, wet brush, so I want my eyes to be well defined, a bit of a light layer, and a slight shadow on top, underneath and now we do the pupil it's something so now it's time for the rosettes basic round grunge i don't know i don't know but let's try let's try let's try some things this color but dark and let's start here oh we are on a different layer once again today i am scared of almost <laughs> almost everything so everything is on its own layer this more black start with uh, these spots over here it's small over here should be a bit dark inside the ear I feel like these spots are like too too much but hey we are learning probably i'll try and decrease the opacity so we are done so we can see what's actually happening let's try this brush maybe it will give us a better feel yeah this feels much better and the rosetting begins here we can hide the screen gems screen gems logo somewhere or a smiley face mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. green area and i think we're done we decrease or maybe let's try and play with these hues and i think i'll use one of the smudging things this one some of these sample here mm, the white stuff and then for this uh, back here we can do where is the brush bit of this bit of this with the uh, one of these <laughs> the opacity let's go ham here with some of this white some white inside the ear some white over over here we can smudge a bit not liking it as much but it's something still need some dark areas this is a part where i need to be patient but i am not so it's a bit sad <laughs> saddest part is i'm willing i'm willing to do this but I'm not willing, 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 because I have a class today. And as I said, I am late. That's my fault. Time management thing. So here we have our Jaguar. I think my takeaway from this entire exercise would be to, first of all, know what it is I'm painting. Seems to be a big help if I know what I'm doing beforehand. Second is to develop patience. And third is to have fun. And fifth is to never forget the whiskers. They even visible. Use this notice, probably. Or let's just use our pencils. Use color pencil with white. Increase its size a bit. We have some of those here with my spread pattern make it large large do the whole background thing spread area make it large Ooh, okay. is it even painting oh yeah. yeah it is and i'll do a light almost yellow most yellow here and then for this layer i'll use my eraser eraser where are you this soft eraser let's remove some of these not everything some of it move some of these some of these moves that and a little bit of this and a little bit of that yeah and so there we have our jaguar and possibly with the same uh, brushes and try and just add a bit of something here and i think we're done so yeah uh this was a weird one because uh first of all the animal we chose i'm not really from familiar with it secondly secondly we are using a watercolor digital watercolor but watercolor nonetheless and it works still also not familiar with watercolor so is that yeah but let me know what you think in the comments and uh, if you like the video like the video subscribe if you haven't already and if you want to support me or the channel check out the links in the description and uh have a great day two thumbs up bye